Thank you for joining us for the webinar, what's new in ZAP 12.1. Today, we'll be covering how to simplify operations, accelerate fast data, and embrace the cloud with the new ZAP 12.1 release. We will cover all the benefits of ZAP 12.1 and the migration path to this latest release of ZAP platform. Sorry, guys, moving slide, just give me a second here. We have with us today product manager and lead system architect at Gigaspaces, Niv Inberg. Niv is uh, standing in for Lee Hodrosh, who is uh, currently in mid air due to a flight delay. And I'm uh, Michael Kipnis. I'm uh, the VP of Services and Support at Gigaspaces, and I'm really glad you could all join us uh, today. A few housekeeping items before we begin. This webinar is part of our Make Zap Work For You series. You're welcome uh, to join the conversation on our Twitter and visit our blog to see helpful tips and tutorials about working with Zap 12.1. And today we'll be starting with an overview of Zap 12.1, discussing its newest features and how they can help you. We will also hold the Q&A section at the end of the webinar. It's important to note that this webinar is being recorded. The recording will be made available to you at the end of the webinar. And of course, if you have any questions throughout the duration of the webinar, please check the bottom of your screen. There is a button for Q&A and you can enter in your questions and they will be answered at the end of the session when we get to our Q&A section. If you prefer, you're welcome to ask questions anonymously. So without any further ado, I'm going to hand the floor over to Neve from Gigaspaces. Neve, the floor is yours. Take it away. Thank you, Michael. Just a second, I'll share my screen. Okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, ZAP 12.1. We're going to start with uh, what were our motivation when we chose the feature set for ZAP 12.1. Then we'll continue with what are the actual new features and how you can benefit from them. And as Michael said, we'll finish up with the question and answers. So why is ZAP 12.1? Uh, we're seeing uh, some trends from our customers over the last few years. Uh, first and foremost, we're seeing that deployments are getting larger and larger we actually seeing that uh, the average growth size on customers is almost triple the size of the, the average deployment. Um, and obviously that co aligns with growth of data throughout the industry and from mobile devices to uh, sensors and stuff like that. Beyond that, we're seeing that multitude data storage is becoming more and more prominent uh, with the growth of uh, SSD devices and the general growth in data rates customer now choose to store some of the data, the hot data in RAM and the warm data in SSD and work a system that can collate all of that together. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, in addition, we're seeing uh, demand for a multimodal data processing. In the past, you used to see customers either using POJOs or using um, documents or JSON. Today, we're seeing customers using POJOs and documents at the same time, in addition with geospatial data a full text search, JSONs, and other kind of data. Um, on top of that, as everybody knows, cloud is the new king. We're seeing customers who want to deploy on cloud. That can be public cloud, that can be private cloud. Um, and also we think the microservices architecture gaining a lot of uh, traction, uh, which has a tight relationship with clouds. And uh, to finish that off, we also think that DevOps uh, deployment pipelines, which are very much related to cloud native applications, again, is becoming an almost a de facto a requirement for a lot of deployments. People want to play with Ansible to deploy their systems or similar tools, and there is a growing demand for that. So we took all of those together and we chose the following uh, themes to focus on in ZAP 12.1. Um, cloud nativeness, uh, which we've mentioned, simplification um, across the board, um, because as systems become more larger and more complex, it's important to simplify that so that people can keep track of that. 
and hybridity, uh, which relates to the polyglot nature of um, data. We talked about um, full text search, geospatial, Bojo, JSON, etc. <clears throat> so let's talk about what actual new features are in sub 12 web. Um, first, in the category of usability and uh, the user experience, developer user experience, we have a new REST API for grid management. Uh, this will replace in the future the, the admin API. Currently, we have both the admin API, which some of you probably are familiar with, and the new REST API to manage the grid. Uh, REST API, uh, of course, first of all, is a uh, um, platform agnostic uh, in accordance in uh, controversy to the admin API, which is Java specific. So you can consume it from Python, .NET, C++, um, Go, whatever you want. Um, in addition, the admin API is, consumes a lot of resources because it's kind of a habit within a, a client-side and a server-side implementation, whereas the REST API, as you know, is REST. It consumes very little client resources. We've also added support for full text search. This is actually an expansion of our previous geospatial capabilities from ZAP11, uh, which are based on Lucene. So now we use a uh, similar uh, capabilities to provide full text search capabilities using Lucene. We'll touch more about that in, in uh, later slides. Um, in addition, we added uh, the ability to uh, reload tasks. Basically, if you're familiar with the app ability to execute the user-defined task to execute user code on the server side. In the past, we had a limitation where if you wanted to change the code of your task, you basically had to restart your entire data grid, which means downtime and a lot of pain. Uh, starting ZAP 12.1, you can use dynamic tasks in a fashion so that you can change the code of your task and indicate the change, and that way you can execute side-by-side side, uh, old task and new task, uh, which without downtime whatsoever, which makes the system much more robust. <clears throat> In the front of uh, simplified deployment and DevOps enablement, uh, we've added something called the Unified Grid Manager. This is a, a simplified version of the service grid. Uh, instead of starting a grid service manager and lookup services and uh, manually integrating Zookeeper and other platforms, we now have a Unified Grid Manager uh, which provides all of those in the single unified process with a simpler API. It makes the system much easier to um, manage and deploy. Um, and that automatically exposes the grid service, grid management REST API, which we just mentioned, um, which makes the system, again, uh, much simpler uh, to manage and to deploy. On the cloud native and container front, uh, we have uh, integration with Zookeeper, which we started to talk about earlier. This means that uh, first and foremost, we now have a Zookeeper-based leader election uh, for both the space and the grid service manager. So the system is much more robust. And in addition, we have an integration with Docker and Kubernetes. This is currently experimental, uh, but it's also very usable. You can sort of experiment with that. We'll just touch more on that in a bit. And finally, on the hybrid data storage and fast recovery front, uh, we have uh, enhanced our memory extend. Um, or Blobso implementation to support uh, customizing the initial data load via uh, queries, uh, basically SQL query style, so that you can control upfront uh, which data gets cached in, the, in memory during the initial load. Let's expand a bit on some of those. Uh, first of all, on the front of the Unified Data Grid Manager um, or the RESTful orchestration, um, those of you who are familiar with Swagger, it's a very popular um, toolset standards and API uh, for generating AP RESTful APIs. Uh, we chose to um, build our RESTful API using that framework. This means that it's very integrated to a uh, DevOps tool chains because lots of DevOps tools has a uh, built-in plugins for a Swagger. And in addition, a Swagger has a built-in code generator, which you can use to generate a client uh, or a UI with any language or even implement your own. Um, you can see that on the Swagger website or using our uh, Zap Manager um, RESTful API. <clears throat> so the RESTful API um, is automatically started as part of the manager, and it lets you um, deploy processing units, um, monitor the spaces, even start containers uh, on the fly, and pretty much everything the admin API lets you do. 
Uh, in addition, we have Zookeeper orchestration added. Uh, basically, Zookeeper was somewhat integrated into the system as part of SAP 11, but you had to manually start and manage the Zookeeper, which is a complex uh, notion. As part start of starting SAP 12.1, Zookeeper is now part of the, the new manager, which means that whenever you start a manager, Zookeeper is started automatically as well. Um, Zookeeper uses a quorum based uh, network partition segmentation protection, which means that if the networks get fragmented, one side is the majority and the other side is the minority, and so you can have deterministic decision and avoid the split brains uh, which used to plague the system in previous versions. So we have consistent partition balancing, we always know which is the primary and which is the backup, and no more uh, split brain issues. And this is fully backward compatible with a previous, with deployments previous sub 12 one. Have a processing unit jar or wow that you uh, package in previous version. You can just deploy that on top of 12 one and enjoy the new Zookeeper leader election without changing a single line of code. This is also very scalable. Zookeeper is very widely used in the industry. It's battle tested. It's very scalable. It scales to hundreds of nodes and even beyond that. Uh, in fact, we also use it to extend, uh, to, to enhance the memory extend management. So instead of storing last primaries in NFS shared files or uh, other half-baked solutions, now by default, memory extend uses a Zookeeper to track the last primary state. We've also added support for full text search and indexing. So now in addition to key value or POJOs or documents and uh, the latest geospatial, we also have free text. So, for example, if you have, if you're keeping emails stored in the, in the space in the email class and you want to search the title, you could use uh, queries like uh, find me a, an email who has salary in the title or has the words uh, salary October in the title um, or do stuff like wildcard matching, like find me an, any email who has something similar to salary with the first letter being a, a white card. Uh, this is basically taking the uh, Lucene API and fusing it together with Zap API. It's very uh, intuitive and easy to use. And uh, you can check out both uh, Zap documentation and Lucene documentation to see how that works. And of course, this goes beyond queries. You can also specify indexing to speed up searches um, and execute the uh, performant and fast. Um, <clears throat> as we said, we also enhanced memory extend the initial load stuff. And so in the past, up to 12.1, when you did initial loads and the LRU cache, uh, which uh, memory extend used was empty and was beginning to fill up based on the user performance. That means that if the system restarts, you would expect to see a, a performance hiccup because the cache starts empty. Now, if you have a um, predefined knowledge about your system usage, you can uh, specify that the cache gets uh, preloaded uh, during the initial uh, recovery. For example, you can see in this case the, the XML that is part of the processing unit XML, the pure XML, which specifies that um, all the, the entries of type stock whose name is A1000 will be cached, and all the entries of type trade whose ID is greater than 10,000 will be cached. Um, let's look at, look at some user uh, scenarios, user case scenarios that you can benefit from. <clears throat> for example, for the Unified Grid Manager, uh, this can greatly simplify your operations, uh, uh, significant reduction in production deployment, and total cost of ownership. Um, previous to 12.1, you had to um, use customized shell script for starting each deployment. You had to pre-specify for each GSC, it's a uh, in memory size and other JDK or JVM parameters, which UIT had to be educated about. Uh, you had to, it was very hard to integrate this with continuous integration pipelines. And if you're going to deploy that on the cloud, you'd have to um, create some custom security policy and open lots of ports for the outside world so you can communicate with that service grid, uh, which is a, a big pain. Starting 12.1, uh, it's a simple starting JS agent dash dash manager to start the, the management environment. You don't actually have to start the GSCs up front. You can use the REST API to start GSCs and specify the, the memory size and other JVM parameters for each GSC. You can do that per deployment. Um, it's basically the same API for deploying either on-premises or on-cloud. 
and it's uh, you get high resiliency because of the Zuckerper integration, so it's it's become much simpler. <coughs> Excuse me, and the cloud native uh, support built inside. And of course, you can use the the existing uh, service the, the older service build as well. This is fully backward compatible. Um, for the memory extends uh, initial load, let, let's look at some common scenarios. For example, suppose you're a finance company and you have a crisis uh, midday, all of your system goes down and you want to restart. And obviously, you want the system to go uh, the minimum, the downtime to be as, as small as possible. So you could say that um, uh, specify the memory extend the initial load queries to uh, get intraday stocks. Uh, based on time uh, into the cache and the rest of the data gets lazy so the initial load will be extremely fast and all the data will be uh, cached so it won't be get what needed to be refetched from the ssd uh, you could also go with a temperature based solution for example categorize your data to be um, hot warm or cold uh, for example an e-commerce uh, might say that shopping carts are eager and customer profiles or product catalog are lazy and again, get a, a very fast initial, initial recovery time. Or it could be payload based. Uh, basically, this means that you can uh, categorize the query to whatever you want. For example, if you're an advertising company, you could say that uh, some customers pay extra fare for becoming a VIP customers, and those get loaded upfront, whereas the others um, are loaded lazily based on the image. <coughs> Next, we have cloud native patterns alignment, uh, the whole notion of hybrid cloud deployments in containers. So, uh, Docker uh, now has a ZAP 12.1 now has Docker images. This is not part of the ZAP 12.1 distributions. Currently, it's an experimental feature. So, it's available as part of an um, open source GitHub repository, which you can see in our uh, organization. Um, starting up uh, the next version of that, this will become part of the release process and will be published to a Docker Hub or similar hubs. Uh, we also have Kubernetes integration, which follows the same notions. Uh, we already talked about the RESTful API. Uh, this can be added to a um, um, deployment scripts and the continuous integration, continuous deployment. You can set up testing environments or staging environments to test that. And uh, as you, if those of you who are familiar with microservices, uh, the whole approach of that is very microservice oriented. You can have uh, multiple crossing units deployed on Zap, talking between themselves. Those could be uh, web crossing units or integrated with RocksDB. Uh, they can talk amongst themselves using remoting services on top of that, uh, so much like a gRPC. And you can promote a solution from an application to the GSC to the Docker container, and it's very um, nice to write microservices that way. Um, we also mentioned full text search. Um, consider, for example, that you have uh, lots of unstructured data coming from streams. It could be from, from sensors or from users inputting data or any stuff like that. You can build up a system that streams that information and index it and uh, process it. This could be uh, either via Zap as poly containers or as part of a Spark or an Insight Edge application uh, using a, a streaming or structured streaming and processing that information and filling that into a, a database or a data grid like Zap or a visualization dashboard or whatever your application requires. <coughs> That's it for what's new to have one. Uh, obviously, there are more features. You're welcome to visit the What's New page in 12.1 as part of the release notes. Uh, we've also got uh, two more uh, webinars upcoming, one in, in Wednesday, tomorrow, actually. This is a uh, real-time microservices from zero to production in under three months. And another one in July 12th regarding HDAP, which is hybrid transactional application uh, uh, analytical processing beyond big data database hype. If you want to, if you're interested in one of those, you're welcome to visit uh, gigaspace.com and sign in for those. And uh, I'll come back to Michael for the questions. Thank you, Niv. A uh, quick reminder to everyone, if you want to ask any questions, please check the bottom of your screen. There is a Q&A button and you can uh, enter your uh, questions. Um, I see we have a few questions in the pipeline. Uh, Niv, I'll uh, read uh, the questions for you so you can answer them. 
So the okay. first one is uh, regarding memory extent. Does uh, memory extent uh, have to be used against SSD and flash? Can we use it against regular disk? Okay, that's an interesting question. Um, actually, memory extent uh, is based on a third party called RocksDB, which works against any uh, mount partition. So you can use it against regular disk as well. Obviously, the performance won't be as good, uh, but this is very useful for developers who are uh, getting acquainted with the feature who can start on their own laptop and, and then they can shift to production without changing a single line of code and work with SSDs or even beyond that. Okay. Thank you very much for that. And the next one, can I still access the lookup service and GSM when I use the unified grid manager in ZAP 12.1? And are those going away in future releases? <clears throat> okay. Um, so actually, um, we think that the lookup service and the grid service manager are in, in the, in, down the road, they'll become uh, internal components within the manager. And at some point, they won't be accessible. Um, but right now, they're still accessible because we strongly believe in backward compatibility and we want to let our customers um, gradually shift the new um, features. Um, so right now you can uh, completely access them the same as you did before. Okay, thank you. And um, can you also answer a question about REST API? Uh, can the REST API be used without the unified grid manager? Uh, okay, uh, officially that's not part of the product because uh, we designed it to be deployed as part of the manager. And um, however, basically the REST API is a, a WAR file which is packaged as part of the product. So users can in theory um, deploy that WAR file in any environment and use it. And um, I would say that I would not I would only recommend to use it for um, read-only operations to monitor the grids. Um, it's not recommended to use it to, to deploy or to change the state of the system. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, we have a, a few more questions here. Will REST API also support admin events? Um, yes, later down the road, we'll add support for that. Uh, we chose to start with the, 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 the monitoring operations when we'll add events in future releases. Okay, thank you for that. And we have a, a question from, I think, existing customer of ESM. Is elastic deployment of processing units still supported? Just the deployment is still supported, um, although uh, it's deprecated. Uh, we plan to do um, similar capabilities to ASM in the REST API and the Unified Manager in a different fashion. And we, we will touch down with existing ESM users to figure out that when we change uh, from ESM to a new uh, feature, uh, all the capabilities will be kept. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Niv. And uh, thank you all for joining us for our webinar, uh, What's New in ZAP 12.1. Uh, 